Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another specialty spotlight, this time with a cardiothoracic radiologist, Dr. Tan Muhammad. Thank you so much for being on my channel. Absolutely, right. pleasure to be here. Awesome, so currently he's a radiologist at the University of Florida in Gainesville. I think it's what you just told me. Yes. And I really like to know like, what made you go into radiology? Oh boy. That's a big starter question to, yeah. to lead off with here. So uh, radiology is different for everybody. It, it, some people go into radiology because they have a family member that was a radiologist and they die right into it from medical school. Uh, I'm more the, I guess, more traditional route in the sense that I went into medical school thinking that I was going to save the world and do something else. I was actually, truth be told, going to be a transplant surgeon. And Whoa. I did everything in my career pathway through the first couple of years of medical school, doing research, doing everything leading up to transplant surgery. I got to my third year uh, clerkship in, in surgery and absolutely hated it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so my career was dashed. I mean, I was president of the surgery club and, and, and everything. So I had to do an about face really quickly. And a lot of friends of mine at the time were actually going into radiology. I'd say probably about three of them uh, were all kind of steering towards radiology. And I said, well, what's the, what's the, you know, what's the hidden secret? What's the, the big deal about it? And so I went down and spent some time with them, spent some time with some of our faculty members at, uh, where I went to medical school that were in radiology. And I actually fell in love so I'm thankful to them, uh, of which uh, two of them are still friends of mine, and uh, I'm glad and forever grateful that I went into radiology. That's awesome. You're lucky to have so many friends who went into radiology. I feel like most most of my friends were like, "What radiology? No, that's not exactly." For me. It's always that little hidden, you know, crazy specialty over in the corner. Everybody wants to do internal medicine, family medicine, OB, or something like that. Which a yeah. lot of people in my medical school, quite frankly, were going to do. But fortunately, a couple of other ones were. Uh, saw the light, pun intended, and they wanted to do radiology. <laughs> awesome. So after, you know, radiology residency, you chose to go into chest or cardiothoracic. Tell me what led you to that. Well, one of my mentors in medical school, Jeff McCoy, um, he's a chest radiologist, actually, um, at the VA system where I went to medical school in Nashville. And he took me under his wing when I was a third year medical student floundering around trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And he says, you know, you really got a good sharp eye, as, as most people tell their mentees going into radiology that. And he's kind of steered my career and, and kind of showed me all the nuances and, the sh and, and all the little subtleties that I needed to know. And it kind of gave me that natural affinity, if you will, to go into chest. And when I went and chose my residency programs, I know you're probably going to laugh at this, but I went to uh, the University of Nebraska for my residency in Omaha. Never been to Omaha before in my life, didn't have any ties to Nebraska, went there and actually was fortunate that I hooked up with the uh, one of my future mentors at that time, uh, Judd Gurney, who was a world-class, world-renowned chest radiologist who unfortunately passed away a number of years ago. But uh, Jeff, was uh, Jeff and Judd were both phenomenal. They put me together on, on chest and sky was the limit thereafter. So I, I went to residency thinking that I was gonna do chest, tried to do everything to avoid chest and then kind of gravitated back towards it uh, towards the end of my residency. Got it. So that's that's amazing you had such great mentorship that's you're yes. very lucky in that i'm time. very fortunate very fortunate in that regard so what is a chest radiologist what do you do on a daily basis uh contrary to popular belief from a lot of <laughs> medical students and residents we were just talking about this yasha but uh most most radiologists uh, chest radiologists don't just chase pulmonary nodules we don't just kind of uh, you know uh, sit there and, and contemplate what to do with these nodules and that sort of thing. There's actually a lot more fun to it. There's a lot of interstitial lung disease. There's a lot of cystic lung disease. And if you do the cardiopulmonary side of things, you actually get to, to, to migrate, so to speak, into the heart. Uh, I, I sometimes joke with my other specialty colleagues that the heart is not just something that separates the lungs. It actually <laughs> does have a function. And we actually spend a lot of time, uh, you know, uh, going through the diseases and the, and the physiology of the heart as well. So you, you can really broaden your spectrum if you not just look at the pulmonary side of things, but you look at the cardiac side. Yeah, definitely. Especially with like coronary artery disease, I feel like cardiac CT and cardiac MR, are, they're becoming very popular. Cardiac MR has just exploded over the last few years and it's not all, you know, people worry that it's taken over by the cardiologist and that's not necessarily the case. Here at the University of Florida, for example, we have a nice consortium where we joint read the cases and generate one singular report uh, for our clinical colleagues and for our patients so that they're not getting two separate reads, something that may be discordant, that sort of thing. And I think that model works pretty well. In my past life, when I was at the Cleveland Clinic, we did the same thing uh, and it, was, it, it worked pretty well. So I think you can actually get along and play nice in the same sandbox with your cardiology colleagues if you choose to go uh, and to do uh, cardiopulmonary imaging. That's awesome. 
And so kind of like an offshoot of that, lung cancer screening, it's become this huge public health thing. I know because my dad is really involved with it and we do a lot at my institution too. So how does it impact public health? Talk a little bit about that. Well, ever since the US uh, Preventative Service Task Force kind of allowed it, so to speak, to, to come, up, come into play, it's been around uh, more than a decade. And a lot of people have been doing research for even longer than that since the early 90s, even with the Mayo trials and the LCAP studies and that sort of thing. So it's been in play for a number of years and that we are just confounded, uh, quite honestly. And I know we just finished saying we do more than just pulmonary nodule chasing, but in fact, <laughs> with lung cancer screening, it's actually a public health service that we actually do. So it's, a, it's something that's needed because we have so many folks in this country that do smoke that are exposed to cigarette smoke uh, firsthand or secondhand. Mm -hmm. And, and it's obviously, you know, pre-COVID anyway, it was the number one killer in, in the U.S. I mean, the, um, the, some, the, lung, the, the lung cancer screenings that are done, uh, that need to be done by American Cancer Society shows that we, we hit about roughly 230,000 uh, new cases of lung cancer each year, almost about 135,000 wow. deaths per year. And that's huge. Um, so we could, if we could try to save some of those lives, prevent some of the disease and, and some of the impact that it actually has on healthcare and, and also the funding of, of, of patients that are sick and or dying from this disease, uh, we, we could really make a huge impact and, 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 and save uh, people, money, time, uh, suffering. So I, I think all of those can be uh, positively impacted by lung cancer screening. Absolutely. And I feel like because of you know, lung cancer screening and having such a big impact on public health, it's a great opportunity to get involved with advocacy. Do you feel Absolutely. like that's, yeah. That's... In full disclosure, I was, I, I was the past specialty chair in chest radiology for the ACR. Uh, so I, I, I'm kind of biased and certainly I, I, I uh, get on that soapbox every chance that I get to say, look, we need to screen more people. We need to get more folks in screening uh, because it's just quite honestly not as advocated or, or maybe the revenue streams are not there to advocate appropriately for it. Uh, whereas you see great advocacy going on, like, for example, in what you're going into, which is mammography. Uh, yes. students, Susan G. Komen Fund Foundation and, and the like do a wonderful job getting women into the appropriate screenings at the appropriate times. We just haven't had that same groundswell of interest and support for, for lung cancer screening. And I think once it happens, I think we, you know, uh, everybody has to do their own part. But once it does happen, I think we're going to see a lot more cases getting diagnosed earlier and earlier. And hopefully we can stem the tide. Uh, for, for decreasing the overall morbidity and mortality for this disease. Absolutely. That's, yeah, that's, it's all about just education for physicians, for our patients, for everyone. So yes, yes. thank you for your great service for that. Oh, absolutely. Um, now, kind of going off of that, what do you think is the most rewarding part of your career as a chest radiologist? Um, I, I'm going to sound a little hokey when I say this. I, uh, I probably would say just actually meeting people, educating people, not just in chest radiology, but everything. I, I, I think I was a born educator in, in the sense that I was, even in medical school, I was TAing anatomy classes and that sort of stuff. And even before then, I was a physics major in undergrad and I was doing a lot of that stuff. So it kind of is more of an offshoot, as you were saying earlier, going into radiology. So uh, I try to mentor uh, people at this stage of my career. I don't want to sound like I'm the old gray beard or something like that. Okay. Oh, I do have some gray in my beard. Uh, I, I do say that I, I try to mentor the younger folks that are going into radiology and bringing them up from the medical student level, uh, helping them get their CVs together, the ARIS applications and that fun stuff, getting their personal statements together. Uh, that to me is very rewarding, especially when uh, students match into radiology and they come back and tell you, I matched at such and such a program. And I say, fantastic, we share a hug, we share a laugh, we share a cry sometimes, especially if they go to places that they were, uh, was their number one choice or something. Yeah. Uh, same thing happens for, for residents when they're coming through the program, but not just teaching them chest radiology and teaching them the joys that I actually have and, and get out of seeing, making a diagnosis that was previously unmade but also helping them get into fellowships and life and life beyond residency. Because yes, believe it or not, there is life after residency and, and, and fellowship. And, and that's really the fun part. And I've actually really found it to be quite rewarding to, to maintain collegial relationships, professional relationships uh, with former graduates, former fellows, and, and you know, be able to call upon them for, for things and help them advance their careers. That's awesome. So it sounds like we share a passion in mentorship and education. I mean, I can only hope to be an educator like you, but at least I can say that I've somewhat taken part in some mentorship so far. And it, it well, is yeah, really I, I would say I want you to be a better mentor than, than, 
than me. I always tell people, you know, yes, you've got some groundwork laid down for you by great educators that are at your institution, but, but try to, to, to say, okay, what would I have done differently? How would I put my own spin on this? And how could I help the next person that comes along that is seeking your guidance, your mentorship and, and or your sponsorship there, you know? And, and I would say, try to do better. You know, and I'm not saying that in a derogatory sense. I mean, just to try to uplift more people because truly uh, radiology is a fantastic specialty. And I'm certainly quite happy that I did not turn into uh, a very capable, hopefully capable uh, transplant surgeon. I'm, uh, I'm very happy to be a, a chest radiologist. Awesome. No, I agree. It is always about kind of looking back and seeing what you can improve on. So I, I totally understand where you're coming from with that. Yes. In terms of like general advice, what type of advice do you give to your med students, to residents that come through? Like, what would you tell them? Um, I would say, boy, you're hitting me with a, a big tough question. question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these are tough ones. Uh, what would I say general advice wise? I would tell our, our incoming, it depends on what level of training you are. I, 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 kind of hearkening back to what we just talked about with medical students, with residents, with fellows and sort of thing. I would say, you know, if you're, if you're a medical student, even considering a, a role in radiology or a career in, in radiology, know what you're getting into. Just don't do it because your friends are going into it, like I just mentioned a few moments ago. But roll up your sleeves, go down to the reading rooms, expose yourself, talk to the residents, talk to the faculty that want to absolutely take you under their wing and, and show you all the joys that we have on a daily basis when we make those, uh, you know, uh, unusual diagnoses or, or, or help with, with certain teaching foundations that, that need to be there and, and, and known by all medical students. If you're a, if you're a resident, uh, you, you know, make sure you, you try to uh, teach them all the idiosyncrasies, if you will, of making subtle diagnosis, not just knowing what the secondary pulmonary lobule is, for example, in chest radiology, but understanding how that's applicable on a more macroscopic type of a level. And then, because I, I look at it that these the people that I'm training are going to be the ones that are going to be reading my chest CT when the time comes, and I want them to be fully functional and fully capable to do so. Uh, same thing for fellows. I, I, I think it's just about paying it forward, I think is probably the best way. It sounds kind of, kind of, Pokey and, and, and like I said earlier, but it, but it really is true. You definitely want to be able to train the next generation, get them ready so that they can do the job and do better, hopefully, than I've done in my career. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for that great advice. I, yes. I agree. And the secondary pulmonary lobule will teach you everything you need to know about, about you know, chest radiology. I feel like, look, if you know where the lymphatics are going, you're going to understand lymphangitic spread. I totally Exactly. Agree. Exactly. Well, <laughs> it, 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 it's really straightforward. And like I said, it, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And, and I think that you should take some sort of, certain joy in, in whatever you do. I know you said you're not doing chest, unfortunately, but if you're, if, if you're going into mammo, understand how the lymphatics work in the breast and understand how, how certain cancers can appear certain ways. And I think that's certainly, you know, catching things early to help people get, you know, that over the initial shock of saying, oh my gosh, I've got a, a bad disease, whether yeah. it's cancer or something else, and helping to reassure them and taking them uh, hand in hand and saying, look, you're going to get through this and we're going to get through this together. And I think that's, that's the role of a, of a physician and that's the role also of an educator so that you can have the people that are around you, the mentees to understand, okay, this is how, you know, Dr. Gupta or Dr. Muhammad or whoever handled that situation. I want to do just as well, if not better than they did the next time I'm able uh, to, to face this kind of situation or scenario. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, you're full of great advice. I, I'll need to like consult you again in the future for real. Oh, um, please. Well. I, I'd be happy to do that. I, I'm always around. I'm always available. I may, you know, I may not be, I try to pride myself on answering things within 24 hours. I really do. Cause I think people really want to try to have answers uh, for things and, and people just need to be, uh, aware that there are people that are out there that want to help guide their careers and want to, and I'm, and I'm not trying to say that I'm the only one that's out there. There's tons of people, as you probably know, through social media and otherwise, that are great educators, far better than I am, that, that definitely want to, you know, take people under their wing and show them, show them the beauty that, that, we, that we have, and in, in not just radiology, but in medicine. Yeah, I agree. I'm always encouraging people to get on social media. I'm like, people will respond to you, you know, at the very worst they Absolutely. won't, but almost everyone does. They're Absolutely. All... People that I've never met, I've actually gotten and forged a relationship with them because of social media. And, and I know um, people always talk about, oh, you know, how many social media channels do you have? I only do Twitter. I'm not plugging Twitter or anything like that, but I've never had Facebook or any of the other things that are out there, Instagram, Snapchat, or any, any other stuff. And I find it to be very helpful because it's almost, you're getting stuff in real time. I have people that I've never met sending me cases from Ukraine, from China, 
Uh, wow. Just to show you, just to, they, they'll take a video snippet of the case and they'll send it to me and say, what do you think this is? We have no idea what's going on. And I show it to my residents because I find that to be more educational because they're like, they may not see an example of this case. And we kind of yeah. work our way through it and give a reasonable uh, differential diagnosis. And it kind of adds a little bit more spice, if you will, to the to the day-to-day -day grind sort of thing. That's amazing. That's so cool that people yeah. are contacting you via social media for those reasons. I've never even really it, thought it, about it's that. A, it's a lot of fun. It's it's really a lot of fun. And I find it to be just a different different case mix, if you will. Uh, than oh, you yeah. So. We definitely have, like, you see the same few things over and over. Very rarely you'll see things out of the ordinary. But if you, you know, go across the ocean, it's like a completely different. Absolutely. Different world. Absolutely. So. Awesome. Well, without making this go too long, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Oh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm having a great time. I, mean, <laughs> I know. This is fun. I, I'm enjoying this. Yes. Um, well, I will have your social media listed in the description box below so that anyone can reach out to you and your Twitter Please account. Do. Please do. I, I, I'm happy to talk and chat about anything, mostly just radiology, but anything radiology. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Okay. Thank you. We